Are you looking for valuable business advice to reach that seven-figure revenue mark? Do you want actionable tips to properly navigate through every business challenge you encounter along the way? Let Tersh Blissett and Josh Crouch be your guide in getting you to the top here at Service Business Mastery. Tune in as they sit down with world-renowned authors in business, leadership, and personal growth who share valuable insights about management, marketing, pricing, human resources, and so much more. Let their nuggets of wisdom gold guide you in owning a thriving, profitable, and ever-growing business. Here are your hosts, Tersh and Josh. All right, welcome back to another episode of the Service Business Mastery Podcast. We have uh, favorite guests on our show, or at least one of the favorite guests. I don't want to make you guys feel too good. Uh, we got Justin and Noah from UpFrog. These guys, uh, we actually have added some some beverages, so we don't normally drink on the show. But you can't <laughs> see us, so you just have to take our word for it that we are drinking and having a good time here in Vegas. Um, so well, guys, welcome back to the show. We got some some new stuff to talk about, maybe, maybe talking and, and kind of rehashing some old stuff, if you will. But welcome back. Yeah, thanks for having us. And, you know, always, always a lot of fun to be here in Vegas. Um, always fun to be back on the podcast and uh, Profit Rocket, right? Um, a lot of buzz around the event, right? Like everybody was excited to get here and, and a lot of a lot of big things and pictures and, and things were thrown out and then we're here and it's like, wow. Yeah. Like, like last night was pretty surreal, you know, we're on the rooftop of this uh, brand new casino here in Vegas and you're looking out and like, this is the new look of HVAC. It is. Yeah. It's the industry's changed in just five to 10 years. We're looking on the side of a casino with 66 floors and there is the picture and logo of profit matter. Yeah. On the side of it. Like that's pretty sweet. Now, so, so everybody, the everybody the that's driving in Vegas is like, what the hell is profit? What is H H C? Yeah. What is this? What is this thing? <laughs> yeah. Why does it seem so cool? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Why did I go to college? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> As so we sit here in the center of the conference room, it's just uh, more people than we envisioned. And, you know, it's it's been quite busy with all the stuff going on. But uh, I've seen, you know, a bunch of people who are, are really amped to grow their business. And it's cool to see them all in one place. Um, you know, all these people are here to, do, you know, learn and, you know, implement new ideas. So I think that's a good, yeah. You know, yeah. And I think it's good really way to spend cool, off today. You know, we have a lot of clients around the country and it's cool to see them face to face. Yes. Yeah, like we have so sure. many here and it's like, wow. Yes. Like, um, people look different in person than they do on Zoom. Yeah. <laughs> Much different. Just, the, it is. It's really the build. biggest difference for me. It so is. So some people the you assume difference. are, you know, short and then they're, they're you know, towering over. You're like, how are you like six five? You know, I'm a pretty tall guy. And then, you know, <laughs> other people, you just, they look different and just, that's the best way to put it. So, uh, yeah, it's nice. I mean, we're in a, we're, quote unquote, in a post COVID world. Uh, it, at least yeah. it feels normal. The handshakes to be here. are back. Handshakes yeah. are back, no elbow rubs, <laughs> no, you know, fist bumps are still there, which is cool. But yeah. um, what's nice about this event, what I've seen is it's it's very focused on contractors. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's a very contractor heavy crowd versus mostly vendors. Yes. Um, which, you know, it, it's cool. It's, it's actually not place, many. But it's, there's, there's, there's hundreds, if not, you know, a thousand or so contractors here learning different things, talking to different people. And there's, there's a, what, 15 vendors? Yep. 12, yeah, not 15, many. Yeah, I know you guys not are one of them here, but 12, 15 vendors. Yep. So um, speaking of which, so obviously um, you guys represent and own UpFrog. Mm -hmm. So digital marketing agency, you guys, you guys more, it's kind of a generic term for you guys because you guys are. We like sold, to call it a growth engine. Yeah, yeah so. you guys, growth engine. Yeah, you right. guys have solved some unique problems. We've, we've talked yep. about some of those things in the past. Um, on today's episode, we're going to talk more about recovery. Yeah, the second so R. The, the second R, if you will. Um, we talked about reactivation in the last one, just getting back in front of your database, getting tune-ups, getting those things on the board. So why don't you guys kind of take me through what what is recovery, first of all, and why is that so important? And also maybe also why uh, why it gets forgotten so easily. Uh, well, you know, I mean, it's a big topic, right? Recovery is... um. Something first that we saw in the uh, Home Depot retail program that we were dealing with, right? Because retail sales leads that we were running um, closed lower than the demand lead, right? Sure. When somebody's AC or furnace is broken, it's much easier to close them on a one-call close, right? So when you're going out to somebody's home who has maybe generated a cold lead from the internet, 
and you're going out there and they're, their system's not broken. It's getting old, but they know they need to replace it in the future. So we really got introduced to the world of, okay, um, how do we sell a job when I'm not at the kitchen table, right? Because if I can figure out how to do that, I can be more successful and we can get more revenue into the company. So when we look at an average HVAC company of say five trucks, and let's just talk service calls for a second. On average, there is 1,530 unsold service calls in an entire year on a five truck company. That's insane. It's insanity. And, you know, that's, that's a, about a 45 to 50% close rate. So if you're running, you know, your, your close rate of your service techs, you know, for your no, this is no heat, no cool, right? Calls that are, that your techs, these aren't even. So these are the calls, these are the calls you're getting a service fee and you're not getting anything else. What yeah, are you saying? Yeah. And, 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 and we kind of follow that process all the way through and, and, um, at the end of the year, there's, there's about $1.3 million left of jobs that are unsold, even if you only recovered 30% of those. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's funny because repairs aren't sexy. Like no, when, when you have open unsold estimates for repairs, it's like, you yeah, know, whatever. It's so like, who cares been, about been, 300 bucks? I'm trying to get 3000 or 10,000 or whatever. Right. So we've been talking to people about, you know, Hey, you know, what do you currently do? Like all contractors around, they say, well, you know, we have our text follow up. We have a office person that follows up. Okay. I think I'd be biggest, surprised if those things were actually true. The biggest thing in, in how I know that will <laughs> never work ever, like internal processes for a tech following up or somebody like that is it has to be a different person or thing that follows up with the initial appointment. Right. Because the technician is not going to pull to the side of it. Like Dude, in between he's, calls, he's, he's not been in the attic all day. He's tired when he gets it, home. Do you really right, think and, he's going to follow up? We all say they should run three or four calls a day, but when it's hot, they're running more than four calls a day. Absolutely. Like it just, it, it's the way I've life is. I've heard up to nine from a few people. Oh, nine, like some of these guys, you're, some of these guys are almost a through them. You know? Some of these guys are a badge of honor. It's like, oh, I ran like, my best day was like 15. Yeah. Like, how the yeah. hell do you even get to 15 houses in a day? But that means they're running through, they're literally going right to the unit. They probably figured it's a capacitor or something quick, give them an estimate, move on. And, and it's, it's, it's it. Nobody now, the ever higher numbers we again. normally see from salesmen, which I didn't want to mislead mm -hmm. there. It's not from, you know, selling techs, we'll call them. These are normally from guys, you know, like your your average uh, 1,500 truck drives around with your app on it, just your regular salesman, right? That guy is, you know, normally commission-based, all right? If he has a bad feeling or, you know, the customer doesn't understand the third time, all right, he, he's got more calls today. And, he, you know, next opportunity is knocking. So he's not going to slow down. And wait the hour and a half explanation, the decision making. And I have to call a friend to make sure this is the right brand. I should have got. He's looking for the you know, easy slam dunk. Yeah, totally, yeah. totally. So yeah. this is what we mean by recovery, you know. And you over, you don't really see that, you know. The guy's still killer salesman, okay. But there's money that's just left there, and that's what you know. Kind of we we refer, refer to it as the abandoned cart, right? Because uh, the customer didn't necessarily abandon the product, okay. They might not have got all their questions answered or. They may have just, you know, had wanted to talk some to time. Spouse. Yeah, wanted some time. You know, that's a common one we hear. But sometimes it's literally just, you know, they, they want to limp it out, all right? And uh, three weeks later, you know, the call center's given up. Um, you know, maybe they've fallen down on your outbounding. So you're waiting for a reactivation text, okay? They, they're not ready to respond then. Um, it's not necessarily your fault, right? Um, yeah. It's kind of just yeah. timing. And that's why technology is so great because you don't have to sit there and pay someone to what we call cold call, right? Because at this point, it, you're calling numbers that don't answer. We just wait for them to respond and then, uh, you know, follow our process into booking these these and that's know, missed replacements or repairs. Technology comes into play here so much because it's like we can, what we call, I hate even saying this, we lay traps. And the traps are <laughs> we send them content. And when they're ready to engage with content, they are ready to make and start their positioning to actually purchase yeah. the system, right? Cause it's all about right message, right time. So how do we know that? Right? Like if we call somebody, I say this every time we're on this call, I don't answer calls that I don't know who they're from. I don't either. I don't either. If they leave a voicemail, I might call them back. Yeah. Yeah. And so it's like, we lay these, these, these quote unquote traps, but we lay, we give them information. Right. And when they set off one of these alerts, it's going to let us know that that's the time to engage that consumer with it. And. I don't think the majority of contractors understand. I would say 80% of these people that they didn't sell, they didn't buy from anybody. 
it's not like they went with a cheaper guy or that it's this ego that we have inside it. Like, like, you know, they didn't buy from us. So they must've been, must've been, they must've went to Chuck or, or this or that. Yeah. What we have found is that they didn't buy from anybody. I mean, you know this what? is real They're, statistics. Yeah, it is. Over this half. is real data. It's over half. And what happened was, you know, um, their daughter broke their arm and life happened. Or, you know, the husband got laid off. Or, you know, they thought they were all pumped up and the grandmother was going to help them pay for it. And you know what? They got turned down on credit. And this is going to be a reality that we're going to we're gonna experience more and more. Like, we've been really blessed here the last couple of years. This is, honestly, it's been since 2012. We've had a hell of a run. In our it's been pretty easy to grow the last it 10 has, years. It has. And, and, you know, we started a business one time in 20, 2007, 2008. And it was some of the hardest times. Um, but that's what I kind of cut my teeth on was, was how, do we, how do we do business? And how do we speak to a consumer when um, stuff's hard? You know, I mean, you know, you're so beaten down through life and the economy and maybe they lost a job or this. And then all of a sudden their air conditioner breaks. And I'll say the aggressiveness that worked the past two years. Okay. People needed stuff. Great there was point. a, That's there a was a shortage point. of equipment. Um, this, this stuff will begin to fade and Home. the natural phase of business is yes. to grow 50% year over year, you know, sometimes hundred percent when you're smaller, um, in some cases more than that. So as we face a different reality, we'll call it, um, going back to those customers that necessarily won't cost you as much to get, or those customers who, you know, when you were pushing through, you just missed, as I just talked about earlier. Um, that will really help you get to that growth that you're looking for as, you know, let's just say broken systems uh, become, you know, less of a reality. You know, yeah. other people go to different means. We know this. And at a very minimum, even if you found out that that customer maybe did buy from somebody else, yeah. we're taking the temperature and we're improving internal processes because now we know. Data. It is. We get information like, oh, it was... Um, don't make decisions off gut feeling is what That's Rob right. Pulte just said. Yeah, it's, it's exactly. It's using the information that you have. Get more information. And, you know, could, it could be that um, maybe you're just way out of line. Maybe your tech, they don't like. Maybe they felt They didn't like the way he walked in the house. That's right. He was, that he, like he, people he wasn't, get offended. He wasn't happy. He, yeah. was, he, didn't, he didn't smile. He was kind of a dick. Well, there's a, there's a lot of reasons why people don't buy. They didn't either. They didn't know him or they didn't like him or they didn't trust him. And it's much easier from the comfort of your home, regardless if it's 10 minutes or two hours, you know, you respond at your will. Um, it's not aggressive. It's very uh, passive and helpful. Um, that, that's how you'll, you'll find this, uh, you know, the same way we talk about how we're the, the great local company. This is what that is in text. And uh, oftentimes it's missed in the haste of call centers or, uh, you know, sales appointments during summer. So. Uh, you, it's nice to recover those during, you know, your shoulder so, season when most people are struggling to find work, your, your schedule's, you know, booked. Yeah. So what, so what does that look like? So we're talking recovery. Yeah. You guys were talking about technology. We didn't really put it yeah. together. Like what the, what does that look it's a like? It's process, right? And the first thing we always do, right, is we sort of segment the data in the beginning, right? Like we've got, um, okay, what were your unsold repairs? What were your unsold replacements? Because each of those have a different messaging and tone. And we don't even talk about why didn't you buy in the first message. We're just simply reaching out as the owner or a manager and finding out how did we do? And we say this over and over and over and people don't get it. Like either they're impatient and they just want to call up and say, Hey, why didn't you buy from us? No, no, no. We want to give the benefit of the doubt to the consumer. Maybe there was a reason why they didn't buy from you. Right. And we want to make sure number one, okay, did we show up on time? Did you understand what they were talking about? Did they give you a path and a timeline and expectation of what it's going to look like when you purchased? Most of the time, what we find out is that they, they, they did their diagnosis. They went to the home. They talked to the homeowner and said, I'm going to send you the, the, the thing. Uh, they got it working and say, hey, I'll just send you some quotes of what it'd be to replace it. They never had a conversation. It never gets, never gets talked about. Yep. They have no idea yep. what, what that little piece of paper is that they left behind through email. Yeah. And what we're finding a lot of times, even from some big software providers, a lot of these quotes are going to spam mail. Have yeah. you seen that? Uh, I've, I've heard of that. I've, I've, I have seen that. Um, I didn't, I didn't experience that when I was on the HVAC site because I was very careful about, we didn't, when we had the email marketing stuff, we didn't yeah. just send out a blast to everybody right away. We warmed up the list a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, and I was, even the email providers that we use were actually outside of our, 
CRM because I was a little worried about deliverability. Yeah. So if this is, if anything, right, or you better be calling your customers to make sure they actually received the so, email so, the so here's, that so you here's, gave. A, here's a great point. So yeah. even leaving an estimate and sending a text five minutes later, there you go. we sent you an email with an estimate. Did hey. you get it? Yeah. Keep it now that now they got that number in their phone. Right. They're gonna remember who it's from. Yep. And they've they've already engaged. Exactly. Yep, got it. It's great. And and here's the thing, right? You know, is is um when do you stop following up? When they say no. That's right. <laughs> that's right. I mean, it's that's what it because yeah. I mean, we all know, we've all seen statistics until you actually put something in place where you're like, oh shit, that was like the seventh, the seventh mm-hmm. touch point. And they finally said something. Because we give the ability of our contractors with our recovery plan to set the time period, right? Because we want you to have first dibs, right? We know that the first week or so, it's probably better if you do reach out by phone, sure, right? But after that time period, you set a time period where then it kicks off and now we become the catch-all, if you will, you know, the re-engagement of that. So, um, and we wanted to have that. We have a per job type. And then we have it by time duration per job type. And then we can map that to an individual campaign. Okay. So, and, and, and with that, I'm, ass- I'm assuming, because then oh, that gets into messaging, right? Because if you're trying to do some sort of follow-up and you're, it's very generic, right? And the, the, the messaging is very generic. You can't hone down to like, hey, we were out to, repl- to look at your air conditioner. It's more like, well, hey, we, we came out to do a repair. And it's more generic. And, and I know you talked about messaging in a video. Um, yeah. Do you want to talk about a little bit about that, about how that messaging can really impact who you find and who you actually get to kind of come out of the woodwork, mm-hmm. if you will? So that yeah. way the, the, the right people raise their hand for yeah, the right job. And that's, that's really important. You know, everybody talks about, you know, what's more valuable to a company these days, reviews or maintenance contracts, right? Like, wow. What a discussion we've had. That's you been know, a little bit of a topic this it's week. Topic. Like lately, right? <laughs> like, and, and, and we talk about, you know, um, and some of the answers, I, I can see on both sides, right? There's good points on both sides. You know, there's the, the crew that says, well, you know, show me anybody that's actually made money on maintenance contracts sure. and I'll show you how valuable. And then there's other people that say maintenance contracts per X gives you this value, yep. right? And, okay. and it's both ways, right? And I think both are right to some degree. I think that it's important and I think, People need to realize that if you just send out marketing collateral that talks about a tuna or a maintenance appointment, you will for sure 100% lose money. Why not craft individual offers for specific styles of units for tune-ups, specifically designed for So go, go that into that a little bit. What are you, what are you yeah, referring so, to? So really, you know, I mean, when you look at the, uh, who did it really well was Mobile One with high mileage motor oil. Right. And what they did was they created a motor oil that was specifically designed for cars and vehicles with over 75,000 miles on. And what's the, what's the, what's the thought process there? At least what do you think the thought process there to, to get cars over that? Cause well, I was... they could charge more for the oil. Okay. So, because it was specifically designed. So it was for them. designed differently. It was, it was, it was probably very similar, if not the same oil, but they could actually charge more for it or it was to win that market share. Right. When you look at your, you know, the, the oil market, they probably have segments of what, who they wanted to go after was the import market, was it synthetic, was it this? They knew that they had a opportunity in the market to go after um, an un, untouched or unheard of or underserved market. So when we put out these postcards or when we call our customers or, you know, nobody hates running a tune-up for a unit that's a year old and warrantied by somebody else. Yeah. But yeah, why don't we, why don't we use marketing collateral that, that kind of pulls them out, right? Like if... This is a, a tune-up that's specifically designed for units that are five years or more. So somebody it, with a two-year-old system is not going to get a high mileage like tune-up. Just like in the summertime. And they're not going to care either. If they see that, they're like, that's not me. Yeah, yeah that's right. it's not relatable. Oh, we tell it in, in, in print down below. If your unit is younger than five years, this is the one for you. But if not, this is the one that's a paint design for you. Interesting. Why not? I mean, you're not going to make any money anyway, so why go out there? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. You're just going to look like a salesy company. You're going to get the review that says he showed up 10 minutes late. We had a brand new unit and then they tried to sell me something. So you, so you mean it, it's with Halloween coming up and this probably will get posted after Halloween. Don't do the uh, oldest, spookiest furnace because everybody knows you're just trying to find leads to replace it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. A good, I've seen that done yep. on the radio well, and TV and, and it gets leads, but a lot of them don't replace because they kind of get the whole, the game, right? Yeah. yeah. But yeah. Um, this it, looks much more helpful as our, your tone is most, most times. The helpful person is always 
uh, better responded to in text than a pushy person. Yeah. Okay. So the same things that work in person and on the phone don't work in text. And that's why, you know, a lot of people that try to implement that same thing yeah. through their text messaging don't have much success. So. They're, they're trying to use marketing messaging uh, in text messages and people so see right through it. Dude. Or the they worst is on like, social platforms. Oh, they, they want to write this book, <laughs> like the novel of our company and how we're going to help you and like save your day. And what you have to realize is this, this consumer, when you send out that message, probably just got off work and they're driving. They just got home from a day and they're frustrated. And they open up their phone, they see a book about how great, you, you know, all these different things. And it's like, why don't we just say, hey, you know, um, we got these systems that can help you. Would you be interested in that? Yes yeah. or no? Yeah. Because worst case, if it, it, it gives them an out. So if they're not interested, yeah. they, don't, they don't reply, stop. So you can, again, retarget them in the future. Yeah. If, if, if you just say, if it's just like a push to get something, they're like, fuck you guys, like. Yeah. Stop. Don't little, don't send me anything. A little secret. I thought about saying this one or not, but uh, one thing you said no earlier, right? So if the customer says no, um, that's you know not legally stopped. All right, and I'll leave it there. So so the way that you would handle that objection is kindly when you are in need of service. Um, here's a you know link book whenever you're ready. Yeah, no yeah. problem. Yeah, yeah, no problem. Like it's, yeah, no it's problem. not sales, right? You're not going to hey, keep hey, trying hey, to push them into no, something no, they don't no, want. Not at all. And we're just yep. going to let them know that hey, if you ever do need service. Here is the dedicated line that you can you can schedule your service to get your first. They can send it to a friend. We have put wording in it, so if you search through your messages three months from now, you'll mm -hmm. find it. Yeah. All right. Like you're looking for that HVAC and guess what? guy. If they ever there click that link or open that message to go, guess who gets a trigger? A you trigger guys. for terms people don't know is a notification. Let's just say message on your mm -hmm. CRM that says, "Hey, someone just reviewed X uh, from three months ago. You might want to give them a call." Yeah. Yeah. Or we sent them into one of the other R's, which is relational. So we go into relationship marketing when, when we know we have an open opportunity, right? We've tried to recover it, couldn't close it. So that is your relationship marketing, right? Those are the people that you send them your blog content. Not much, but just stay current with them once yeah. a month, right? And you guys do that at Relentless. You do that with the email, yeah. you know, all the time. And it, and it works, yeah. but you don't need to send it to everybody. No, no. And that's uh, it just as a... a and that's something I've always thought about too, because, but it takes, it takes a lot of work to build stuff like that because it's, it, you have to think through the pathways. Like did they, what did they hire us for? Yeah. What marketing message do you want to send those people? Because someone who's a tune-up customer or a maintenance membership customer, somebody who just waits to stuff breaks are two totally different people. Oh, yeah. And that's you got exactly your proactive what we've versus done. Your reactive. So you have templates. Mm -hmm. So you literally choose your template that aligns with your customer group. Um, so, you know, you upload, uh, your big list, and then you upload your negative list. So your negative list will pull those names out, and then you can choose a campaign for specifically those. And it's people. dynamic. So yeah. based upon the actions that, or behaviors, let's say that a consumer takes through a path, it will grow and shrink that list. You'd be surprised how many people message, uh, even stop, right or no, I don't want it right now, and then three weeks later, have used that link to schedule a tune-up. Now, why would they do that? Would they say, did, were they saying no because um, they didn't want the offer? Mm -mm. They said no because we hit them at the wrong time. Yeah. Timing is vitally important. Oh, yeah. And day parting and sending messaging at the right time of day is, I would say, it's one of the keys to success. Sure. So, so what, you, you saw right time of day. Is, I mean, obviously, I'm assuming every market's a little different. Or are people just generally mm. very similar as far as like, Certain times language. of day, they're checking their phone more. Language, you know, like I often, so I do onboarding pretty often or oversee it at least. And um, the the biggest thing is your language. So for instance, I'm from the Raleigh area. Uh, things like the triangle, okay? Remain relatable, mm -hmm. all right? If you say like the Raleigh metro area, all right? That's the most uh, different across, you know, different areas, right? Yeah. So yeah. if I say DC metro, it's like no problem. But then you go say uh, Miami metro, people are like, huh? Yeah. yeah, it's just not something that they don't know, talk. They like don't. That. They don't say yeah. that. So I wouldn't say it's timing. Timing's similar. People don't like to buy in the morning. Let's just say that. Okay, unless it's broken, you're probably not calling someone that morning. Uh, proactive customers most likely are ready to purchase when they sit down on their couch in the evening. Right? Sure. And this is data speaking, not not my whim. Um, it it is you know throughout the day you see sales, no doubt, and you see people communicating. But you'd be amazed at the amount of people who want to talk in the evenings. 
So automation kicks that up because your CSR has left the office. Right. Okay. And if it can handle that the would, customer. That would have been my question is like, how, how, how does that get handled? Because someone's, so they're ready. Six o'clock at night, nobody's in the office. Somebody replies. So refrog sits handles, until the morning. Yeah. That's what normally happens. So refrog actually takes the customer and can handle it with little to no human help. So it'll classify the customer and leave them with an open message expecting a response when hours resume if customer falls into said category. Um, 85% of customers will say no human needed. You know, they'll get whatever offer you were looking for booked or they'll go into the funnel, which uh, I was going to lead into, cleans your data. So dealing with a lot of smaller companies and even guys in the, you know, 5 million or less, they just scaled. They just wanted to get here, right? They, they basically took a good salesman and hired a bunch of them and now they're here. So organization, as we've been talking about, seems to be the topic here, um, is not always key in these companies. So they have a lot of data, but I'll ask for, you know, repairs versus replacements. Mm -hmm. And they'll say, I can tell you which houses we've been in. Okay. You know, like, yeah. like they sold or I, they didn't. Yeah. So we'll take that data and we can actually clean your data. Essentially you get work as well as, you know, people who didn't have the best experience, you hear why people who did, you get reviews from people who are looking for service. You put those on the side. People who said they will service in the future, but not right now. Now you've taken your 3,500 people and you've put them in sections real time. So over, let's say, you know, two weeks, you've now gotten your data list as well as appointments, but you've cleaned your data list as a byproduct of the software. So um, I was just talking to someone about how, you know, turning dirty data into clean data is huge. Um, it, it is. I, I've got, I've got, I get lists from, from customers and I'm looking at them like, do you really want me to email all these commercial customers you sent over? I told yeah. you not to send the, but yeah. in even in certain, and this is usually service because it's residential commercial. I see commercial businesses listed as residential, just basic stuff, right? Like yeah. I, this, you're, you're talking on a way deeper level. Like, I'm talking fast. very surface level. Yeah. You just, the data is not getting entered correctly from the start. So the data is terrible coming. It's, it's like, and that's why shit in, shit out really. Messaging in the and beginning is so important because we want to draw out the good and the bad don't care about the bad or the good. Like I, I want to separate, right? And, and we do that through a cleaning process, but mostly it's by using the correct message, right? And um, we created the refrog program and we knew it was going to be like this just unbelievably great thing that was going to help people throughout the shoulder season and it was going to be very productive. You know, we, we had kind of followed the, the alpha version back in February and got kind of held back on it and, and tested it and launched it here the last couple weeks, but I had no idea, no idea that it would be so productive. Got a company, you know, we had three companies, so we launched six of them as our first, you know, real live push after a bunch of testing. Four of them have already paused because they can't handle the work until Christmas. Till Christmas? And it's October 21st. So, that's, one of them so it's October 21st. I was going to say, just one of them preface has 174 that. 174 tune ups already scheduled. That's insane. They're on a hiring blitz right now. I've never seen it where, like, um, the shoulder season was when you had to hire more techs. Yeah. Normally, that's when you just have to try to maintain. It's unbelievable. And, and the owners, they're, they're happy, but mostly they're, they're kicking themselves in the butt. Like, damn, I didn't realize all this was here. Yeah. Well, so, and, and you, you, you mentioned the word reviews. So most people, they yeah. think reviews, they, th they usually think, okay, completed job. I asked for a review, right? That, cause that's, that's the pathway. That's how all of the CRM connections to the reputation management connections work. Just what people know. So, so you guys in, in, in your platform goes a little differently in, in this, yeah. whether it's using something like refrog or just in general, reaching back out to your customer everybody base. Everybody gives up on everybody. And, it, and that's the common theme, whether it be reviews, whether it be repair sales, whether it be tune-ups, whether it be outbounding. And I, and I know why we give up on them because we barely have enough time to spend a couple hours with our family in the evening when we get home. Like this, this, this trade and this service business is tough. And then you put the added stress of, of a shoulder season, like, or, or just in general, like we might send, you know, one or two review requests after a job is done. If they don't post a review, what are you doing to follow up then? Because we've taken information from, from customers a month or two later, and we asked them, well, why did you post now? And most of the time they say, because I didn't know how it was going to work. How can you ask me for a review on the same day? Sure. Because there's so, a certain percentage that yes, at the time when they're, well, the, their problem has been solved, there is a good percentage of people who will leave you that review because they're happy right now. 
but there are the people that are like, hey, you fixed it, but I don't know if it's going to work in a week. So exactly. I need time. And then they, they, nobody ever follows up because at that point we're 15, 30 jobs down the line. Because we're so short-sighted in view that reviews don't equal revenue. Reviews, well, coming from the marketing I side, know. I mean, you guys I also, know. you guys do marketing. Uh, and obviously this is a huge focus of mine. We, I t we talk about reviews, I feel like almost daily yeah. with, with contractors Such because it's so, on SEO. Such it's so impact. important because the best rankings in the world don't mean squat if you can't convert and convert is reviews. Mm -hmm. It's reviews and it's, it's, it's the response to those reviews. Cause people look at that stuff and the data shows that people look at like an average of like six reviews when they hire a company and that might be light. It depends on, you know, really what you're looking for if you're really not sure, but if you don't have the reviews and you don't have people saying great things about you regularly, then you, you're not going to have a chance to get yeah, the house. Yeah, but why do we give up on it? Like, we're so easy to give up. And, and it's like, there are solutions out there that can, um, and we've created one. I'm sure there's other ones out there as well. Um, but we need to be more prudent about following through. We can't just be chasing around everything, yeah. you know, for the easiest solution. And I think that technology will be the... The thing that will really help contractors and hopefully alleviate some of that stress that they have, because if you use the technology to assist, you're going to have a more successful business. Yeah. The problem is, I, th I think contractors, they look at technology and there's so much of it right now. And that's not their, it's not their game. It's not their forte. Like, yeah. like technology is almost like a burden, right? Some of these, some of these programs are so burdensome. And then you look at the tech stack. I mean, they're paying these monthly yeah. um, fees to use this software. Where they so, you're saying, so, you're, so you're saying $4 memberships $4 are still a thing. Oh yeah. I love membership. Right. And, and, and I'll just get this on the record right yeah. now. When it comes to membership, the reason why I value yeah. memberships more than reviews, <laughs> the bottom line is, is I can't control where the reviews are posted. And so you were one of the first people we had this discussion in, in Facebook groups and, 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 and you brought up such a great point, Justin, Google and Yelp and, and, uh, uh, Angie and home advisor, if they don't like you, you stop paying them. Anybody ever you do, had their GMB suspended? Yeah. I, who hasn't at this <laughs> right. point? Like at this point, some, now. exactly. I've, right. I've heard from people that I had a guy call me when I was driving here to Vegas. He said his GMB suspended four times in two years. Ouch. Like. To try to, are my, are my reviews even going to come back? Because sometimes they don't come back, they disappear. <laughs> and it's, so you're, you're putting your trust in platforms that you don't own. Your memberships and things like your website, like actual assets, yeah. your customer list. They're assets, yeah. Those are assets. Those are actually things that people want to buy because they're worth something. So, yeah, and, and I think that there's, um, look, like we saw what we talked about earlier. We're on the rooftop of a casino. There's rockets on the side of, of hotels. There's HVAC in the city of Vegas that's taking over. There is a new breed and there is a new change, right? People look at, you know, with all the equity money that's being flown in, they look at things and value things in different ways. But I still believe that both are vitally important. But personally, if I were to buy an asset, I want to buy something that I control. And I can control memberships. I cannot control whether I wake up and all of a sudden my GMB is suspended and it's not showing. Right. Yep. Right. Then how valuable is that? You just bought this asset and they're running the music all it. Yeah. And then nobody can hire you. Yeah. It, I think what they're doing, they're buying an assumption of a, of a amount of traffic to convert from a rank. And I don't know. It's, it's too hard to identify. People that... The people that come in and buy into the industry or they, they've already been in the industry, they understand the value of these things because just like we've talked about, the things you guys are talking about with the data, the customer lists, reactivation, recovery, they realize all of those things exist. If they just put their systems on it, they can instantly become more profitable and they don't have to go get any new customers. They're already there in the list. It reminds me. I had no idea. Like I was talking to Victor the other night and I was like, man, I so wish I had this software that we created when I had my own. The amount of stress and pain that I would go through. And then what I'd do is I'd, I'd put up a plan in the weekend. I'd go in the office and talk to my CSRs and try and rally them up. We're going to do this outbounding thing. We're going to do it. And, and they it'd go hated great it. between now and like lunch. They hated it. And then, <laughs> and who wants to make 150 outbound phone calls in a day? Yeah. And then, and then you get hung up on uh, people say nasty things to you on the phone. It's just, it's, it, it's, it's just human nature, right? Like 
we get so used to all the spam calls and stuff. You, you, a local company is actually trying to do a good, like just trying to touch base with their customers and people are nasty. This is because they're, they're tired of the spam. And that's, it's, that's uh, it is a grind. Yeah. Like I give anyone credit that's been in like telemarketing for more than like six months. I'm telling you. <laughs> like, I don't know how they do it. I could never do it. it. It's just so like deflating. But so as far as uh, the event and stuff like that, let's talk about that quick. So no, this I'm... is your guys' first event with a booth. With a booth. With a booth. With a booth. Right. 14. Lucky number yeah. 14. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's the lucky but number. You definitely, don't, you definitely right. don't want 13 in Vegas. Yeah, and it was interesting. <laughs> you know, we're going to set up our first booth and, you know, we're a young company, <laughs> you know, but it, it's been a hell of a ride going on in this last year. And we've, I think the, the most satisfying thing is the amount of people that we've helped with the journey, but. We get there and need a, a task yeah, note, yeah, 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 ordering, the filling, and getting it here. And the boys got to set it up yesterday. And uh, how'd that process go there? I huh, uh, bet some other setup guys a hundred dollars they couldn't get it right. They got it. <laughs> I had to pay the hundred. Yeah, yeah, it was difficult. But uh, you know, we bought it brand new. Got it shipped in literally the day before. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, at least you got it on time. He said it would be tight. I didn't understand what that meant. Um, four men stretching fabric tight. Yeah. <laughs> That's what he meant. Yeah. I knew it was bad when I'd messaged him a couple of times. I said, how's it look? How's it look? And it was crickets. I'm like, Hour oh and a half. Boy. Oh yeah. Boy. When you don't hear back with thumbs up or oh, something yeah. like that. Yeah. I figured they'd send me pictures and I didn't hear anything. And then Brock <laughs> said, uh, Brock sent me some message and said like, um, we're finishing up 40 minutes later. Nothing. We're working on it. Dude. Yeah. <laughs> 40 minutes later, nothing. We're like blowing the dinner reservations. Everything. Yeah. yeah. Got to get this thing up. No. I know you guys were sweating it, but man, it looks great. Oh yeah, you know, it looks awesome. It, it's been a blast here. It, it's just great to hang out with people that, and we are. It, it you know, it's funny because similar to, and we'll wrap up with this. So, because um, I've had this experience too, and I just talking offline, I know you have. Um, your customers don't always tell you that they're happy and they're busy and all this stuff, and then they come up to you and like we're so fucking busy, and it's like the best, like for what we do on this like the non-contractor side it's like the best feeling in the world to have people tell you that and that they're they're they need to hire they they know they need to work on operations and systems because they they just can't get in front yeah. of it and it's very fulfilling to hear that person versus like a tax or even it, it, to, to actually see that and feel that like emotion and how it's yeah. changed their business yeah and and that's because we you know we we love our clients dearly because we get involved with them like they're almost like going to you know, yeah. we're, 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 we're in the battle every day and it's, and it's, we find out so much more in person, like who they are and have dinner with them and, and hang out. And, um, that's where the name growth engine came from because yeah. at first, you know, we were doing our online model and then, uh, you pour fire on, I mean, pour gasoline on fire and, uh, you just ignite all their problems essentially. So yeah, you'd help them with accounting, help them with, you know, how to get this much equipment. You know, I've, I've never had to buy a hundred thousand in one month. How do I do this? You know, like I don't only float me 75,000. I don't have a credit card. So, uh, you know, that's why it, it became the name growth engine because we're willing to help with anything. That's how much we care. And we know that, you know, if we help the companies that we partner with that they will grow as well as us. So, yeah. um, when you're not, you know, leeching off, we'll call it a retainer or have, mm. getting a participation trophy. All right. And you hit, you have to, otherwise they won't be with you long. There's no contracts, there's no setup, nothing we've ever done. So you have to stay on top of your ball or you're cut quickly, which keeps you as a business very lean and, you know, agile, right? And you're always trying to find the new th next thing. And uh, while you have a team behind you implementing what was working or still working right now, um, you're always looking for the next new thing. So it's been interesting uh, over the past year, and I think we've nailed it. So. Yeah, I mean, uh, a year ago, it was about 50-50 split that online pricing was never going to work. Crazy, right? And you guys are still here. Hey, uh, still it, it works. It works pretty good. So you're that. still here and in, in, in adjusting and doing other stuff. So yeah. um, it's always it's always great to have you guys here. I just love hanging with you guys at these yeah. events and stuff. Always, so it's always, good always stuff, Josh. Man. Yeah. So I really appreciate you guys coming on and uh, hope you guys enjoy the rest of the show. And thank, thank you. Guys. Nice. We'll see have you guys. A good one. See you now. Hey there, listener. Uh, this is Tersh with Service Business Mastery Podcast. Check out more information on Company Cam and some of the great features that they offer. Are you an HVAC looking to save an hour a day every day? Are you looking for the latest tool to help your business scale? Well, we have the tool. You maybe couldn't tell, but I'm no HVAC tech. 
And the thought of telling a pilot light from a gas bell has me sweating bullets. Hi, I'm Jordan, and I work at Company Cam. I may not have the tools to fix a furnace, but I do have the tool for your photo documentation needs. See what Company Cam can do for you. Keep all your different project photos organized by date and location while using annotations and comments to keep workflows clear, all from your phone. Check it out today. Thank you for listening to this episode of Service Business Mastery. Now that you are equipped with essential business advice from this impactful conversation, you are one step closer to becoming the successful owner of your dreams. If this episode has been helpful to your business journey, don't forget to subscribe to the show, leave a rating, and share it with other owners as well. Visit servicebusinessmastery.com to learn more.